He's uh, Kenny Smith, TNT NBA analyst, joins us on the show. Hi, Kenny. How are you? Hey, what's going on, man? Now, wouldn't you want to see Shaq get in that car or get out of that car? Well, that's that's been the missing link <laughs> to the commercial. That's the missing link. Yeah, I'd like to see how long it takes Shaq to get into that car when he does it's that. A, it's a it's a it's a Rubik's cube that's never been solved. <laughs> Uh, let's start from the end and work our way back with the decision to have Hibbert on the bench last night. Uh, bad decision or just bad defense on the Pacers? I think it was more bad defense. I think overall, um, I, you know, they, we could all, in hindsight, yes, you know, LeBron was able to get to the rim um, in, in two seconds. But... <laughs> Uh, you know, I don't think that was your fir- would be anybody's first thought. It would be, you know, they got five five smalls into the game, uh, with the exception of of Bosch, and will, would Hibbert be able to guard guys coming off picks? In hindsight, uh, I can understand how you make you would you probably would uh, make that decision. Uh, would I have made it? I doubt it. You would have kept Hibbert on the bench. No, I would have. I would have oh, kept okay. him in the game. Okay. Yeah. The only if, the only reason why I say that is if George is overplaying LeBron, if LeBron gets by you, you have no help, and that's the only reason. If the defense is, I'll let LeBron have it on the perimeter. He wants to take a three with two seconds to go. I'll live with that. I can't let him go to the hoop and then not have anybody there. Well, the the, the million dollar question is, you shouldn't let him go to the hoop. And, you know, if, if you just stay in front and you have your hands down, you know, I, I thought that uh, – I think we all thought that with two seconds left, that's a lot of time. You, there's going to be a shot, a shot. But you're thinking of Michael Jordan on Craig Elo type shot. You're not thinking um, you're going to get get to the rim uncontested. And regardless if, if, if Hibbert was, was in there, we're, you know, the defensive help, no one, no one. No one was there. Well, you have to have you have to say what if, and and do you do it this way? Because you played in the era when Jordan was you know king. Um, do you double team and make make you know, have somebody else take the shot? Dwayne Wade's not in the game. Force somebody else to be a hero there. Well, you know it's it's very difficult at times to keep the guy who wants the ball to get the ball. You know we always say, well, who's going to get it? Is Kobe going to get the ball right now? Is LeBron going to get it? Those guys know how to get it, and they're going to get the basketball. The key is that everything, you know, we always say that the, everything should be pointing north, meaning any time they catch the basketball, they should be going north, the opposite way of the, the basket they're on. And, I, you know, I, I really think it was more of a, 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 a lapse defensively by Paul George more than a coaching error by Vogel. He's Kenny Smith, NBA on TNT. By the way, game two is tomorrow night uh, back in Miami. Uh, less confidence, more confidence that uh, the Pacers can make this uh, seven-game series. I would say the Miami Heat aren't going to get taller by Friday. <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> one of the biggest things was the uh, inability to to rebound and the inability to, to, to defend in the post because of the size. Shane Battier is not going to be able to guard David West any better, I don't think, starting on game two, three, four, whatever. So um, his inability to be able to play that position and playing the four spot, you know, the Pacers will still have, to me, that advantage. A couple of things with uh, teams out of the playoffs with the Clippers. They fired Vinny Del Negro. What kind of coach do you see coaching the Clippers? Mm, Well, uh, a coach that, will be able to retain a guy like Chris Paul. <laughs> Is Chris Paul that orchestrating? Could be, that could be a lot of different people. Uh, you know, you know, you know, you have Mark Jackson who has been, you know, coming from nowhere, and then you have guys who are, you know, like Popovich who's coached forever. So, but the the key now is can you can you retain your free agency and your free agents and that's been the Clippers' downfall probably through their whole franchise. Do you think that Chris Paul is uh, the one who orchestrated this, that I'll stay, but i got to get a coach that I want? I don't know if he's orchestrated it, but I, I think overall, um, they, they, you know, there's a decision to probably that said, hey, we, we have a guy that's a free agent. And 
we have to maybe put something in his mind saying, hey, we're making changes to winning to the NBA championship. The longer this goes with Dwight Howard means he goes or he stays? I think it, the longer it goes, seems like he likes attention. <laughs> really? Because, you know, I, I don't understand, you know, how he even gets to this point because, you know, the Los Angeles Lakers, not too many more story franchises that you're going to be able to play for. How frustrating. And you, you, he, he's good enough to att- should be or be good enough to attract people to come play with him. You know, there are people who are playing here in South Beach for minimum contracts that, or over the last three years, that probably could have gotten better deals. But they want to come and play with a guy named LeBron James. Uh, you know, they, they, we've seen that with Michael. We've seen that with all of the great players. We've seen that, especially with great centers. Guys will take less to play with guys who, and have an opportunity to win an NBA championship. I think it's time for him to start thinking of himself like that. And maybe that's the reason why he wasn't able to play well this year because he, maybe he doesn't think of himself like that. Would you rather play with Dwight Howard or Joe Kim Noah on your team? This year, I would have loved to play with Joe Kim Noah. In the few, in, as a long run, I think Dwight Howard. But I, I think he had a terrible year this year. I don't think that he was a, even a, a glimpse of what he was uh, or we, we had seen over over the years of him and Orlando uh, when he was in a, with a Magic uniform. Not even a glimpse. Yeah, it's just it's kind of tough to see this, a guy who's been in the league that long. Is he a leader? Is he that, you know, that number one? Um, are guys going to want to play with Dwight Howard? Maybe, let me put it this way. Do you think the Lakers deep down want Dwight Howard? They they have to. I don't think they have the choice. You know, the Lakers can't lose him one for nothing. Uh, two, they you know he still is a piece that you could build around. Uh, the the one thing that he, like I said, for me, he could play on on, on Team Mars. If, if if you know if if Michael Jordan played on Team Mars or LeBron played on Team Mars, Kobe played. Like guys want to play with those type of players. So to me. Uh, he should be thinking of himself. It doesn't matter where I'm at. But now you're in the most storied franchise in NBA history other than the Boston Celtics. And you're debating. I mean, what's the debate? <laughs> uh, we're talking to Kenny Smith, TNT NBA analyst. Uh, got his basketball camp coming up in July in Chapel Hill. Uh, Kenny, the Jet Smith dot com. You can sign up there. What am I going to learn? Am I get, Tell me what I, I will learn if I go there? You know, the one thing that I've had over the years, I've had that camp every year um, since I've been in the NBA, So, and then out of the NBA. Every single year I've had the camp. I've had guys who were in, who've made it to the NBA that have gone to the camp, guys like you know, Ron Artest and Lamar Odoms, Kenny Andersons of the world that made it. Then I've had guys who would never be able to make the NBA and girls, or WNBA. The one thing you know is when you watch a game afterwards, you're going to say, maybe that was a bad coaching decision or a bad move because you're going to learn basketball. <laughs> <laughs> so you had Lam- Lamar Odom, Artest, and Kenny Anderson who went there. I've had over probably – I've had uh, Nolan Nolan Smith who uh, plays with Paul, and I probably had over the years – Every single camp, I probably have two guys that I think, or, or young ladies who played WNBA or NBA. The best out of three or four hundred kids. Best high school player you ever saw was who? Kenny Anderson. Did you? Did Without you, question. Did you play the uh, pickup? Because of, and this is why, Dan. I've watched LeBron play in high school, but I've never seen anyone at his size and stature, at six foot one. And 145 pounds soaking wet, dominate a game like that. You know, when you see a guy like, you know, LeBron in high school, you say, wow, he's so physically dominant over these kids. But I've never seen a kid that was that size and that stature be so dominant. How many times did you play against him? Uh, well, I, when Kenny was a four year difference, so. The funny thing is, I was a, I was first team All American my senior year in high school. I mean college. 
And I used to drive back as a first-team All-American player of the year that year in college basketball. I used to drive back to watch his high school games because I thought I could learn things. <laughs> wow, that's quite a, quite a tribute there. Yeah, he was, he was an unbelievable high school guard. Well, good luck with the camp and uh, keep those guys loose on the set. Give my best to uh, Ernie, and uh, thanks for joining us, Kenny. No, uh, no problem. All right, Kenny, Kenny Smith. Basketball camp July 12th through the 17th, Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Sign up at uh, KennyTheJetSmith.com.